Over a week has passed since Arsenal last played in the Premier League. It's left many fans asking the same question. When will Arsenal next play? So today we'll get official confirmation from the club itself. We'll also get the latest on a return for Thomas Partey and find out if Arsenal have plans to sign a winger in January. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14 and welcome back to your boy's channel. We are back with all of today's latest Arsenal news so don't forget to smash a like if you enjoy the content and subscribe to the channel if you are new as the Team 14 revolution is only 3,000 away from the big 120k. But let's start off by talking of when will Arsenal next play. Our game against Everton on Sunday was postponed and that was down to the Premier League announcing as a mark of respect of the passing of the Queen they had postponed an entire weekend's worth of fixtures. Many people People had their own opinions on that behalf but moving to the future, Arsenal's next game was against PSV in the Europa League at the Emirates Stadium this Thursday and the early indication that we had from the Met Police was them indicating they were comfortable with Arsenal hosting PSV on the Thursday and at that moment the match looked like it was going ahead. But since then we have received some breaking news as Arsenal confirmed in the morning that their Europa League fixture against PSV had been postponed. Very surprising. I can't lie but the statement that we have from UEFA says this is due to the severe limitations on police and resources and the organisational issues related to the ongoing events surrounding the national mourning for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. A new date will be communicated in due course. Now in response Arsenal had asked of UEFA of if they could reverse the fixture and have it played in Eindhoven and if not that reports had also claimed the possibility of the game being played behind closed doors or if not that maybe a neutral venue. But all of that was rejected and that means that Arsenal and PSV are going to have to reschedule. With PSV reporter Rick Elfring claiming that Arsenal, PSV, UEFA and the FA are now checking whether the Europa League match between Arsenal and PSV can be played on October the 20th. Now for this game to be rescheduled there are quite a few important factors. The first one being PSV Eindhoven as they would need to reschedule the current cup fixture on October the 20th to be able to play this game in the Europa League. But the second factor is the Premier League and the FA as they would also have to move Arsenal's game against Man City on the same date for this game to be rescheduled. And it's very important to point out that if both teams cannot reach an agreement and this game is not played before November the 3rd then Arsenal will be left with no choice but to officially forfeit the fixture. An automatic win for PSV as they get 3 points, Arsenal nothing and for a changed Europa League structure that could be massive as to automatically qualify for the last 16 of the Europa League, Arsenal have to get first place with the team that finishes second having to play a playoff game against the third place knocked out Champions League team. And if things weren't already complicated in the first place, with the World Cup around the corner, Arsenal are already due to play nine matches in the month of October, but that is without counting the postponed fixtures against PSV and Everton. The truth behind all of this is that from UEFA to the Premier League to the FA to all of the organisers, they've created a massive complicated mess going into the future when exactly are Arsenal next going to play because if there's not enough police on the Thursday to manage PSV versus Arsenal then surely on the Sunday when you've got a London derby of Brentford versus Arsenal a day before the funeral of the Queen then surely that game is also going to be postponed or is it? As Arsenal have also announced that our Premier League campaign will resume on Sunday with a trip to Brentford with kickoff now set to take place at 12pm UK time. So Arsenal are going to play before the international break and that being on the Sunday with a small change of kickoff times from 2 p.m. UK time to 12 p.m. UK time. But again this makes no sense if a game is being played just a day before the funeral of the Queen where there's going to be a lot of people in London and the police are going to have a massive job then surely they would have enough police three days prior on the Thursday to have PSV versus Arsenal and even more importantly it makes even less sense now why the Premier League chose to postpone the game against Everton last weekend with no funeral all taking place at that time meaning more than enough police to take care of the fixtures. I understand that we are showing a mark of respect but from a minute silence to a minute's applause, black armbands, there were other avenues where we could have shown respect but it is very important to point out the importance 
of Prince William, the grandson of the Queen, was a massive part of the FA behind the scenes. I am sure that he has played a part of those fixtures being postponed. And yes, you have to respect his choices, but at the same time, the Everton game is only going to cause more pressure going into the future, and it's going to make what is already a very congested and difficult period of time for Arsenal and other Premier League clubs that much more difficult. That being said, Arsenal are going to play on Sunday, so talk to me down below in the comments. What are your thoughts on the Premier League and the UEFA choosing to postpone the games against Everton and PSV? Did they make the right decision? Moving on to a fitness update on Thomas Partey. The last that we heard on Thomas Partey was that he was closing into an Arsenal return and that he was selected for Ghana's upcoming international friendlies. But the latest that we have today from James Bench, he is told Thomas Partey has returned to full training ahead of Arsenal's game against Brentford. The return of Thomas Partey to full training means that going into that game against Brentford, there is a possibility that Partey could be fit and available for selection. And then it falls down to Arteta and Arsenal on if they believe it is worth taking the risk of starting Partey against Brentford. Now the fact that it was a muscular injury in the same position he's had in the past, I do believe that Arsenal are going to be cautious. But at the same time, starting Albert Sambi Lukonga against Brentford away, as many Arsenal fans will remember, it's not an easy away game and so far this year, Brentford have made a very decent start and they've even smashed Man United 4-0 at their ground. It is a very tricky last fixture to have before Arsenal go on to international duties. Having a player like Partey in the Arsenal starting lineup would be a massive boost as this is what Partey offers. Last season averaging 4.84 progressive passes per 90. That is up there with the best in terms of Rodri, Casemiro, Fabinho and with him in the Arsenal starting 11 last season. Arsenal played 24 times and won 16 with a 67% win rate. But I don't expect for Partey to start. If anything, I think he's going to be on the bench. And with the amount of games that Arsenal have after the international break, with games against Spurs, Liverpool and Man City all at the Emirates Stadium, those are far harder games and games that I believe Arteta will keep Partey for. But talking about Arsenal midfielders, let's talk Granit Xhaka. As so far this season, he has played 6 games, created 16 chances and got 3 goals and assists. I think with the support of the Arsenal fans, Xhaka is also becoming a better player. Whether it's the Arsenal away fans against Bournemouth chanting, Granit Xhaka we've got, or the Arsenal home fans going delirious after he scored against Leicester. Xhaka is definitely earning the respect of Arsenal fans once again and becoming a very important part of Arteta's Arsenal first team. Now in the summer Arsenal chose not to sign Yuri Tielemans despite many Arsenal fans being full that transfer but it seems like Arteta has a lot of faith in Xhaka and he's reinventing him and it does draw a few similarities to what we've seen Pep Guardiola do with Ilkay Gundogan. I believe one of Xhaka's most underrated traits is that he's always so reliable in terms of fitness. And with that constant availability, it is why Arteta trusts him so much because he knows that Xhaka is a player that he could start week in week out and he has the fitness to always be available. Moving on, let's talk Marquinhos. According to Goal Brazil, Arsenal are very happy with Marquinhos but might send him on loan in January. It's up to his performances. Send him on loan in January would make no sense whatsoever and it's a bit of a surprise. But the reliable Thiago Fernandes says, Arteta believes Marquinhos has exceeded all expectations. At Arsenal, the player is regarded as a gem. A loan in January 2023 depends on his form. The plan for Marquinhos was to play for the second team for the first six months but that was fast-tracked as the coaching staff was pleased. The story of Marquinhos coming out of Brazil is very similar to the story of Gabriel Martinelli. Two players that were signed out of Brazil, players that had good potential but never quite had the same hype as Vinicius or Rodrigo. But in the case of both of these guys, they've impressed the managers in pre-season. And very similar to Gabriel Martinelli, Marquinhos is making his mark on the first team. He's shown that he's able to play a part on the first team and without any other backup to Bukayo Saka. With the amount of games that Arsenal have coming up, he could play a very important part. The fact that you even have a reliable source claiming the possibility of Marquinhos being loaned out in the first place, it says to me that Arsenal might have other plans to maybe sign their very own new wide forward. With the likes of Pedro Neto and Michaelo Mudrik top of the list, if Arsenal do choose to loan out Marquinhos in January, it only happens because of the arrival of a brand new winger. According to David Ornstein, the Arsenal head of emerging talent Yusuf Sajjad is set to leave his role at Arsenal after three years. He helped sign the likes of Real Waters, Mika Biref, Salah and Lino Sosa 
and he goes on good terms, starting a new role in a recruitment at another club next month. The likes of Walters, Bref and Sosa are definitely players to watch going into the future. Losing your head of recruitment is never ideal, but at the same time I trust in Perma Osaka. And I think what we're going to see more and more going into the future is more work in cohesion with Miko Arteta, which means even more hail and gems being streamlined into the Arsenal first team. Moving on to the other Arsenal news today and starting off with brand new technology which could change the offsides. As the Times announces the Premier League is expected to push ahead with plans to use a semi-automated offsides for next season. Nearly half of the 20 clubs including Arsenal already have at least basic Hawkeye infrastructure in place. This could be game changing as FIFA have also announced the semi-automated offside technology is also going to be used at the Qatar World Cup using 12 dedicated tracking cameras mounted underneath the roof of the stadium to track the ball and up to 29 data points on the individual players 50 times per second, calculating their exact position on the pitch. The 29 collected data points include all limbs and extremities that are relevant for making offside calls. Very similar to what you have with the whole goal line technology, where you're going to have all of the machines work their magic and figure out if the player is offside. That result will then be given to the referee at VAR and then it is down to that person to choose if they believe the offside is correct, which 9 times out of 10 is definitely going to be, and I think I'm definitely for it. No more wasting 5 to 10 minutes of referees drawing these stupid lines when you sometimes have offsides given onside and vice versa. Aaron Ramsdale has been named the most impactful under 25 goalkeeper in the world, according to the most recent CIES study. Over the likes of Donnarumma, Melier, and Sanchez, these rankings are not calculated on the basis of opinions, but more on official and confirmed stats. And what it shows straight away is I guess how underrated Ramsdale is in the goalkeeping game. By no means is he perfect and he still has a long way to develop. But looking into the best goalkeepers in the Premier League, your Edisons, your Allisons, and the best of the best, goalkeepers often peak after the ages of 28, 29, maybe 30. For Ramsdale to be doing what he's doing at 24, showing very good signs of a ball playing goalkeeper, he has still got a long way to go in terms of experience before you compare him to the world class goalkeepers, at least let him get to that age first. The same ranking have also ranked Bukayo Saka as the best shooting creator aged under 25 and on that same list you've also got Martin Odegaard. And talking of Martin Odegaard, only Trent Alexander-Arnold, Kevin De Bruyne and Mo Salah have completed more passes into the 18-yard box than Martin Odegaard this season. Up there with the best in terms of getting the ball into the box but also in terms of winning the ball back. As with 11, Martin Odegaard has won possession in the final third more times than any other player in the top 5 European leagues so far this season. We all know how amazing Odegaard is in terms of creating chances but in terms of the work rates it is very important to have in a top team and Martin Odegaard as it stands is up there with the very best. But that is the video there and there so hopefully you guys have enjoyed and if you have don't forget to go down there and to smash a like and also to subscribe if you are new. If you want to follow your boy in all of his social medias then the links will be down below in the description. But that was all of today's latest Arsenal news today and we are officially back this Sunday somewhat controversially but you know what I don't care as long as Arsenal playing that's all that matters. Anyways I'll see you next time take care of yourselves and have a good night.